saw with these mysterious uh, cars. But that was that was the mid seventies. It wasn't too long really until the uh, few years later the PCs commission. And I think people involved in traditional music then they kind of knew instinctively that there was some kind of good match between computers and traditional music, especially dance music, which was regular and symmetrical and so on. And I know that uh, when I was teaching in Trinity, we used to in class analysis of dance tunes, and just break down into regular forms, and you could analyze them and see irregularity. But then, if you took another tune, you get a different pattern. You took another tune, you get a different pattern again. And again, it was clear that all of these things had to be pulled together by um, by computers. And again, there were sort of infinite potential there for the use of uh, computers. I remember then also the 70s over in digital, which of course is gone, but was a big um, leader in Irish computer um, manufacturing and development and that. Traditional musicians were in there. Pat Mitchell, the Piper, Dublin Piper, was in there. And John uh, Lewis, concertina player, English of origins, married to an Irish musician. And um, they played with computers there, and the computers would um, play Irish traditional music, and I think maybe compose as well, played badly and composed badly, but again, it was another um, frontier, if you like, for traditional music and, and for uh, computers. But the man, in my experience and in my life, that had most to do with computers and Irish traditional music is a man called Dunnach O'Maddy. Dunnach is a piper, many of you had known, nearly you had known, and he was something unusual. He, he was a graduate of UCC in music, and also in science. And he became <coughs> a lecturer in computer technology in the Water Institute of Technology. And he began, uh, his research project was all about computers and Irish traditional music, and especially in identifying versions and trying to analyze what makes a, a tune traditional. And uh, we worked with him in the archive quite a lot of those years. He then uh, moved to UL to become the head of the computer sciences division there, and he became another good man, lost to administration, I'm afraid, another good uh, scientist, lost to administration, just retired there, there uh, recently. But because he could only do this kind of thing in his spare time, weekends, the few holidays he had and that type of thing, uh, it was interesting how technology kept overtaking him because he started out on BBC computers. And computer people there know that they're things long, long gone. And uh, the, the technology kept kept moving so fast and new applications began coming in all the time that uh, it was almost dizzy. Anyway, we all know that in every walk of life that includes Irish traditional music, the playing of it, the listening to it, the processing of it, the broadcasting of it, and the archiving of it, we use, in the Irish traditional music archive, uh, we, we use uh, computers for every conceivable part of our operation, except, crucially except, the actual live playing of music. And it all comes back to that uh, in the end. And I'm glad to say that the, those dimensions are very safely, um, uh, very firmly safeguarded in, in Brian's uh, project, that it's technology and it's music. And I think he has to be about one for probably the technology, uh, and he would stay with the, stay with the music. So, um, Donica uh, Omadian recommended that we use a program called SCORE. It's, it's an engraving program for setting music, but it, it allows analysis of um, uh, tunes. You can work out things like scalar patterns and intervallic patterns, structural patterns, and all that type of thing. And at this stage, we've got, put about 10,000 uh, actual notated tunes onto computer for that, towards that, that kind of analysis. And again, there'd be an overlap with, with uh, Brian's work here. Um, another area then, uh, uh, oh sorry, another, I lunched today with somebody you might know, Hammy Hamilton, flute player, originally from Belfast, living in Poole Lane. And in 1992, Hammy and another flute player, Paul McGettrick from Carlo, uh, set up a thing called EarTrad, which I think was the first discussion group for Irish traditional music. And people suddenly all over the world were contributing to this by email on, on the internet. And that's a whole other huge area. And of course, there are many sites now for the discussion of Irish traditional music. So it's in every conceivable area. And it's in the scientific areas as well as uh, we've been involved with IMAS, uh, a program of the, or a project of the 
Cork Institute of Technology and the Dublin Institute of Technology. I won't go into it now because it's a, it's a, separate, uh, a separate thing. And we've been involved in sound separation uh, uh, of mono recordings, trying to separate piano, bad pianos from good fiddle playing. Uh, and Derek Fitzgerald there of the, now of the DIT is to the fore in, in that experimentation. So everywhere you look, there's computers uh, in Irish traditional music. I was in Milwaukee in the 1990s, and Dan came up and introduced himself to me. He was uh, Jim Vint, and he gave me this, this actual floppy disk, uh, which is, of course, obsolete as, as technology itself. And it was a thing called ABC Win 2, or ABC 2 Win. It was a Windows version of a program, a notation program called ABC. And that forms the link into Brian's operation because. Um, ABC notation has kind of taken over in the world of traditional music. There are thousands of tunes out there in hundreds at least of databases, uh, all not using staff notation as score does, but but uh, ABC notation. So this is uh, how we, we uh, came into contact with David Brian first. At the regular lunchtime session of Donahue's, uh, this chap appeared and he put his phone on the table and then it buzzed and quizzed and so on and for 20 seconds listened to us playing and then uh, a few seconds later it told us on the screen what we were playing. It had gone off, searched the internet and came back with high level matches and then lower level matches all the way down. This is very much what Mad Dean had done on, on, a, on a less um, developed, developed way. He was giving, getting results um, like that as well. And of course, this was a marvelous, a marvelous thing, and uh, we were highly impressed by it, as everyone should be. And what's um, to Brian's great credit is the whole the search element of it. He goes out and searches the we need to talk about how it works, but uh, it basically comes down to searching what's out there and bringing back results. That would be a fair, fair summary, and it's, it's really impressive. And we we have been talking. Jackie Small especially has been talking to Brian about uses that we make about the archive. There's huge potential in it, I think. We're excited because we have a, a terrific body of reliable data, and he's got a program for searching uh, such bodies of reliable, reliable data in different ways. So we look forward to I think this thing has hidden <laughs> potential. It, it's got to great levels already, but it's got to go uh, much further. We certainly look forward to collaboration and cooperation with Brian for the benefit of all. So, thank you.